After seeing all those really cool videos that use epoxy and resin to make tabletops and all sorts of artistic things, I decided to give it a try. I want to do something a little bit different than what I usually see. Usually it's more um, encasing like a natural wood table and making it look sometimes like uh, the Bahama ocean. <laughs> Uh, they usually have you know more bright colors i wanted to do this piece to look like inlaid tile or something like a stone or even i don't know maybe stained glass and i decided to go with an art nouveau um, stencil to do a cutout and then inlay the epoxy resin inside this piece of wood these will be uh, cabinet covers. I made these open shelves in my mudroom and they look so, so terrible. So I need some sort of cabinets to go over the shoes to make sure you don't see the shoes. And I thought this would be a cool little project. The wood I'm using is a poplar wood. I decided to use poplar because it's easier to carve. Um, <clears throat> that I think might have been a mistake because I think this Art Nouveau pattern I decided to go with, a harder wood might have held up in the jigsawing process and I didn't really need to go with something as easy to carve and soft a wood as poplar is. I had this stencil made in Paris when I lived there for six months. It was an image I found online, an Art Nouveau Parisian image, and I had a stencil company make it for me. And in Paris, I made uh, pillowcases with it that I took silk um, fabric and did a um, silk painting on them in the same stencils. They are very beautiful. I have another video um, where it shows them. I might do some more videos on silk painting. I really enjoy it, but uh, just haven't gotten around to it because it's very fine. <laughs> and I've lately been doing a lot of kind of renovation projects that are somewhat artistic. So I took these stencils and I decided to use them in this project. And they don't work as well um, with the cutouts as they do with um, the silk painting. I need more space between the parts that are going to be cut out or I'm just going to lose the pieces of wood. So I had to really alter the, the stencil a little bit by moving it around. So it's, it's a little bit different than the original. And I just have to kind of go through and edit certain pieces to make them thicker, just so you'll see the uh, inlaid resin a little bit more. 
So there was quite a bit alteration from the original stencil, but it still, I feel like, has the integrity of the original. I pre-drilled all around, just putting holes in before I jigsawed, just to relieve some of the tension and be able to go around the angles with a jigsaw a little bit easier. As you can see with the stencil drawing, I ran out of ink with the turquoise color and had to resort to purple. I thought it looked pretty cool, but it was definitely not purposeful.
So I didn't get to videotape it because uh, there, you know, sometimes life, but basically there are some problems. <laughs> when I jigsawed it, I didn't give enough room. So this piece came out, as you can see, it was just holding it maybe half an inch and maybe a quarter of an inch here. And so it was just not enough room, so it just popped out. So I tried to fix the problem over here by indicating the line as opposed to doing the line. I see some troubled problems like here and here <laughs> and definitely here. I'm gonna have to move this down, I'm thinking. So that's what I'm seeing right now. So hopefully I'll be able to do that and not have as many problems with gluing. I'm also thinking of jigsawing this all out and then um, maybe doing like some, some drumming or something to make it smooth, maybe even painting it and then filling the epoxy, I don't know, maybe like a little bit of the way and then doing drumming over here and then filling some more epoxy just so it holds. So I don't really like the way these designs are in just using the jigsaw. It kind of looks half done in my eyes. So I'm doing like a little bit of a, a um, drumming out an indentation um, around the whole pattern. So it goes in a little bit. And then around the edge of the wood, I'm also drumming and notching out a, a little bit so it just looks a little bit finer there are special tools you can buy to make the job easier around the edges but i just don't want to invest in that just because it's more money to be spent and i i'm matching these cat um cabinets to a shelf that was i made from old scrap wood, wood that was handmade from like i think 1700 17 something 1726 or something like that so it was clearly handmade and very flawed and i kind of want to match that same kind of look and i feel that you know if everything is super even and it, it, it just won't match it uh it won't have that handcrafted look i i know that it's so far from a lot of artisans that you find especially on social media i think you know we're so used to the machine look that we forgot that handcraft isn't always perfect and you know there's a lot of philosophy in that in different cultures like a lot of them um middle eastern and you know muslim traditions they they feel that only god is perfect i'm not i don't know so much about it but essentially handcraft objects should be imperfect and that's how you know that a human being has made them and, and Japanese artisans have a similar uh, uh, concept to their when they create something and I feel that like to my core I think you know when you see a piece and it's not perfect it's more curious because you know it was made by hand and you know sometimes the flaws are an indication that a machine didn't do this and i think flaws or imperfections you know especially sometimes when they're purposeful you know they they add like a character that you you don't get in a lot of the mass productions we see today so i kind of like this tool it's a a dremel um multi tool thing it's usually used in construction but i like it for carving because you know it it does give that sort of hand crafted look and i should probably invest in chisels and hand tools because i probably will like it but i seem to just kind of gravitate and get stuck on this particular tool which i guess sometimes happens um i'm kind of self-taught in a lot of things and sometimes a tool you just feel you vibe with so
Okay, so I lost another piece while drumming um, and sanding and doing my thing. So I have to do something drastic. <laughs> so I think I am going to just pour the resin. Just pour the resin. And hopefully the resin will hold these little pieces in place. I know that that's not a good decision, but I'm running out of options here. So I got these kind of earth tone um, tints for my um, resin epoxy. It, they're like a mica um, thing. They're I'm not, I want to get more familiar with this because I've also been really into brew, brew glitter drinks and, you know, a lot of it seems to be edible, but basically it's, it's a mica powder, which is interesting because I've, you know, worked a lot with mica <laughs> and, um, I have a funny story about going to a mica mine and getting kicked out of the mica mine but anyways um so this is like a mica powder and i got like mica earth tones for this um resin epoxy so what you do is you mix the mica powder in and it kind of becomes one color with your resin and epoxy now the color just wasn't working out to what i wanted to i mean i got a green and it came out like a solid gold so that was a little bit strange for me so I was having trouble with the mixing because I, I felt like the color looked like one color and then when you mixed it with the epoxy and the resin it just turned to another color entirely and it just seemed very tricky for me and I uh, I was just having a difficult time with the coloration and I also felt like if I didn't put enough, it kind of looked too bright, and if it just suddenly you put too much. So it, it was definitely a tricky process, and interesting, because I think the more I work with it, I'm, I might come up with a color, coloration that I actually like. But um, yeah, so it kind of muddy. So this was actually, it looks gold, but it was it's really green, so that was confusing. And so I added in clear sections just because I want it to look like, you know, how when you see stone, like a marbleization of stone, there's um, patches of one color and it morphs to another. So I was kind of just plopping in color and kind of mixing it in the grooves. Um, it was so unbelievably messy and I don't like this medium so much because it's clearly toxic i'm not the most sensitive with toxicity you know other people watch me and they're like oh be careful be careful but this like i felt that it was you know i felt the carcinogens <laughs> and i'm not a big fan working with it even though i was wearing a mask and gloves it was just such such messy stuff for me So I mixed a blue to try to correct the color. So the green was gold, so I just figured blue would just correct the color. And so that's what I did. And <laughs> hoping for like, again, a marbleization look, like some patches have more blue, some patches less. I was actually thinking maybe, maybe more blue around the, um, the actual iris, but yeah, the, the color, I don't know. I think there is this, this medium, there's definitely an artistic learning curve. <laughs> um, that said, I think uh, before you, if you're looking this, at this and you're thinking of doing it, again, it's super toxic. <laughs> and I don't know if being a master of it um, is a good thing, honestly but um, it's definitely cool product to work with.
the clear I used as to kind of blend it all together with and it, it kind of did the trick um, moving everything around trying to get that like marbleization look I wanted some sections to be kind of golden some sections to kind of be blue and then like you know the mixing of the two to kind of work throughout like I said what you would get and when you would look at a piece of stone or something more organic and even um, handcrafted tile it tends to be imperfect and you know sometimes um, like random so afterwards like I was saying before <laughs> because I was losing pieces from the actual woodwork I decided to use the resin prematurely to hold everything together and it was kind of a mess to say the least but it ended up looking okay and I used the Dremel again to do the, um, the edges to just um, bevel them in and it ended up just hitting the resin and so it was just kind of a hot mess but uh, it did work out to a degree
this process was a little bit messy and a lot of times the wood would just get stuck in the cracks of the resin sections and a vacuum, I was using a handheld vacuum, it wasn't working nearly as well as a paintbrush. So for this project, I really recommend if you want to do something like this, a paintbrush to get out the um, through the cracks. And then I decided to, for the finer sections, to use a Dremel that you use for woodwork and that worked okay but I still had to go over the, with the other Dremel to get out more of the grooves.
So although I hate, like hate, sanding, it's the worst part for me as far as woodworking, it really is like, makes you realize the project is coming to a, a close and it's kind of exciting uh, <laughs> as much as it is annoying. So then I had to do the next matching piece. Uh, these are pre-drilling the holes just like the first, but the design is a little bit different. I went through and gave more room between uh, what I would jigsaw out so the pieces would have less likelihood of falling off like they did in the previous. And it worked. I didn't lose any um, wood in the second piece. And you know, a lot of people would not like this idea because it's not matching up perfectly. But I don't mind. Like I said before, I think there's something to something with the idea of things not matching up perfectly. It gives a like a handmade look. So symmetry and things matching, you know, having a collection of two things that match is very, very pleasing on the eye. But slight variations between the two, I think subconsciously, you just, that's when you know it's handmade. <laughs> if you see something that matches up perfectly, um, you know, you don't know it's handmade. It could be made from China and shipped over. And But when something has a slight difference, it's like a indication that it's handmade, that it has a soul to it. And I kind of like that. Like, And I think I don't mind that the pieces aren't matching up perfectly. And I find when something is handmade, it's almost impossible to make them match up perfectly. And, you know, in this case, I decided to design differences to not lose pieces of wood. So to make my life easier, instead of losing other pieces of wood and them not matching up anyways. So I don't know. I just find that interesting. I, I, other people might not. And I'm sure a lot of people would disagree, but I think that to me is one of the beauties of something that is truly handmade and unique. And the flaws definitely factor in. The piece completely jigsawed out, I think, is pretty beautiful. You know, I was thinking of doing this as something between, you know, tiling and stained glass. Like a tile look would not be transparent, and a stained glass look would be transparent, and a stone look would be somewhere in between, you know, something kind of transparent, kind of not. Uh, I kind of went with a tile look, which was, it's cool. But you know, I think maybe I should have gone <laughs> with a stained glass look. And when I see that image of what it looks like without any resin in, I kind of, part of me feels like I did it like an extra step that I probably shouldn't have. Um, I think it would have been really cool to just paint it and have holes going, showing through with light. Uh, I don't know, but yeah, round two.
So as I was um, finishing up the jigsaw, the second piece, the first piece, I'm still, still had to do some of the cleaning up sections and fine sanding by hand. It seems like you kind of can't dodge that <laughs> sanding by hand. Uh, I don't know if a tool that really gets into the cracks as well as by hand, which is unfortunate because I hate, I hate, hate, hate <laughs> sanding by hand. But for this piece, you kind of needed to do it. And I kind of sanded a little bit of the, the resin, making sure that there was no piece of wood stuck in there and so it would be cleaner. And the cool thing about um, resin is like you totally mess up and nick uh, the resin and you could just like basically pour resin and go over it. And it just like melts and fixes up your nicks.
So I decided to do like a clear coat to um, pour in to fix up the cracks and nicks of the first piece I was just working on and then add in the pigments for the second piece to start that one up. Um, now I did make a mistake which I corrected on the second piece I should have painted around because I had to do it another step to carve out resin because it was touching the piece of wood and there's still some bits of wood showing which kind of isn't great <laughs> and um, so yeah I just started mixing them together and continuing that I did that partly because I ran out of resin but also the stuff is is not like really great it's kind of toxic so I think like the more you do at once the better I, it's not something that I like want to do a little bit here and a little bit there I just want to like do the resin get in and get out um, it's super toxic stuff I, I just don't know how I feel about it I'm gonna do a little bit more projects to continue but yeah What I'm doing here is definitely not smart. Like I said before, I ran into issues because I was showing the wood and then I had to co-carve in the, out the wood later uh, to get the resin off. 
I, I don't know what I was thinking. I came up with a better solution for the second panel, and you'll see that later with painting first and then using like a different tool. Uh, meanwhile, for the second panel, I added in the pigment, and yeah, that's green. This is a better, how is that green? So the pigment, it just came out green, but that's clearly gold. So that was, that, that was frustrating. So I did the same thing I did with the first. I have the gold, <laughs> green, and, and then I mixed in blue to try to get the color I needed.
So for the second piece, I decided to paint first, <laughs> so I didn't have to do like five other steps. And then I used this um, tool. It's actually from medicine for my children. That I have like 10 of them because after you're done with the medicine, you have to buy more medicine and they give you one of those squirter things. Anyways, so I cut off the top section so it has a bigger hole through it. I put it in, um, in the, the liquid and I just squirted it in the sections I wanted and this worked out marvelous. Honestly, I should have been doing this from the beginning um, instead of the madness I was doing before and then I would have had much less work. But you live and you learn, I guess.
So I put up the second <laughs> cabinet. This is the shelf. As you can see, it's completely sloppy with shoes. And I just screwed in the second cabinet with the first. Um, I found the center, and so I was kind of between the two, and I kind of just put it in there. It was kind of difficult. Uh, I'm not a, a woodworker. I have no experience with cabinets, but I, I managed. So I just got hinges uh, from the local hardware store. I got these brass ones because I figured it would probably be more sturdy. So I did one, the top one, and then I kind of matched it, and then I did the bottom one.
So it's a little bit translucent, but not great. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but the, the front is, it kind of looks tile-like. I think what I did was kind of intriguing. I don't know how I feel about it or if I'll do the same thing again, but it's definitely visually appealing no matter what it looks like, if it looks like tile or if it looks like stained glass, but it, it certainly looks like its own thing. The color goes with the green room. This is our mud room. It's where we have a lot of our plants and it matches yeah, baby. The, uh, the side of the bureau, which is hand, hand carved and the feet on the bottom. <clears throat> Are really cool with that uh, so I'm all in all pretty satisfied with this project